And look, it's raining. What a beautiful sight. I love rain. Just so long as I'm not out in it. Welp, it's finally happened. The light for my room has bit the big one. Now, I could go into a hardware shop, get a new fixture, and a new light, but the thing is, ever since the world went crazy a while back and people started freaking out with freaking underpants strapped to their faces, I haven't set foot in a shop since. Not because I'm afraid of catching anything, no. I just cannot bear to see how the world has changed. It really upsets me. So I do all my shopping online now. I mean, I don't know. It's been a while since all this madness started. They might not be doing that anymore. But if they still are, I don't want to see it. Plus, I think it makes people look ridiculous anyway. I'm getting a little bit disoriented here because I've got an external microphone connected to this camera and I've got headphones plugged in. So that way, if something goes wrong with the microphone, I'll know about it. And there's a bit of a delay between when the sound goes into the microphone and I hear it through the headphones. That's kind of throwing me off a little bit. Because I don't want to make a recording where I'm going... Only to find out that when I play it back, the microphone wasn't working. That's happened more than once while I've been trying to make this video. So now I'm wearing headphones to make sure that the sound is actually working. I mean, yep, yeah, I could use the camera's own built-in microphones, but I like the sound of this microphone better. So, this is my temporary solution. Got this transformer here, connected up to a rectifier and a smoothing capacitor. Also got a fan next to it to keep it cool, because without that it will overheat. So this entire contraption is giving out about 13 volts. That's going up this wire here to an additional smoothing capacitor and as we follow the wire sorry about that noise there microphone temporarily disconnected that's why I'm doing this through headphones so I'll know if the microphone's not working but yeah it goes up to this light panel which used to be the backlight from my old TV that I tried to fix I got as far as replacing the CCFLs with LEDs and that's about as far as I got because I couldn't find a compatible controller board for the LCD screen. So I've just repurposed this as a light panel. And although this does light the room up really well, there is one small problem. Yes, all the while I have the light on, I have the noise of this fan in the background. So I think a less noisy power supply is in order. And it's going to start with this. This is the power supply for my old laptop which no longer works. Power supply is fine. A big piece of wood fell on my laptop and, well, that was the end of that. Of course I cannot plug this directly into the lights because they require about 12 volts and this gives out 19. Well, actually 18.5, but we'll just say 19. So, I think we need to do something about that. So here's a circuit that can help. Now what this is, is a buck converter. 19 volts goes in here, and 12 volts comes out here. The way this works is, we have a MOSFET here, being used as a switch, and this is being switched on and off really fast, like 20 or 30 times a second. So we get pulsed DC out of the MOSFET and then all this stuff here smooths that out and we get smooth DC out here. So if we have really thin pulses we get a small voltage. If we have really wide pulses we get much more voltage. And of course we can fine tune that to get the voltage we want. And the only trouble is that I want to use a triple five timer as the pulse generator. So if I was to put that in, say, here. I don't think there is a triple five that can handle 19 volts, but let's just say there is for now, so... As our 555, I'm going to call it PWM for pulse width modulation. 
Oh yeah, better connect it to the MOSFET as well. So we have a variable pulse width generator connected to the MOSFET, except this isn't going to work. And why? Because this is not going to turn the MOSFET fully on. There's going to be a little bit of resistance across it, and the MOSFET is just going to get hot, and it's not going to conduct the full voltage. Even if I was just to connect a wire directly from the gate to the 19 volts in, it still wouldn't turn the MOSFET fully on, because it's the voltage between the gate and the source that determines how fully the MOSFET's on. If I was using a P-channel MOSFET, it wouldn't be a problem. So as you can see, we now got the control voltage between the source and the gate, but as I don't have any P-channel MOSFETs, that's not an option. So this is what I'm going to go with. I'm going to power the 555 from a separate power supply. So this has got its own 12 volt power supply. And if you look, we've got the 0 volt rail from the 555 going to the source, and its output going to the gate, which is going to control the MOSFET nice and good. Hopefully it'll be nice and efficient, and we can control our output voltage without too much heat. Of course, I really want to go with this kind of design, which is a synchronous buck converter, but I don't have the right kind of control chip for that, so single MOSFET design it is. And this is like the 7,000th take of trying to record this. If I have the camera connected to my TV, and I have the microphone plugged in, there's some ground loop issues which make it sound like, well, I'll just plug it in right now, and you can hear it. Yeah. I'm gonna talk about the circuits again. So I think it's about time to. So I think it's about time to work. So I think it's about time to come up with a PWM circuit. So this is the first PWM circuit I want to try using a triple five timer. Now it looks like this pin isn't connected to anything, but for neatness, I've just drawn the wires that connect the pins together just over the chip. So we got pin 8 and pin 4 connected, and we've got pin 6 and pin 2 connected. We'll see how well this circuit works, or just see what it does. And if this doesn't work, which I'm pretty sure it won't, there's always this classic circuit. Camera 1 is recording. Camera 2 is recording. Okay, so what we have is the triple five so it's a triple five timer in that first configuration you saw. Let's turn it on and see if it works. All right, I've got some crap right there, but I know what's causing that. I've got to put the smoothing capacitor in. Make sure I get it in the right way around so it doesn't blow up. That was really unstable. So we have a square wave. It's about 189 hertz right now. So I'm going to twiddle this and let's see what it does. Okay, well, we're definitely changing the off time. But the on time is staying the same. So that also means the frequency is changing. So, but here we got. 229 hertz and we're down to about 117 now so yep this circuit did exactly what I thought it would so now it's time to try the proper circuit alright so reconfigured the circuit let's see what we get now alright we have a square wave See what happens when I twiddle this knob? And yeah, that's what we want. So I can get a really thin pulse, a really thick pulse, or anything in between. Let's zoom in a little bit on that. So as you can see, as the on time decreases, the off time increases. And as the on time increases, the off time decreases. 
and the frequency stays round about the same. So at the moment we're about 208 hertz, and that's far too low. So I need to find an ideal resistor and capacitor that's going to make that a hundred times higher. I've made a few little changes to the circuit. The resistor is now a 4.7k, still using the same potentiometer, and for the timing capacitor I'm using a 680 picofarads. Also I've added an additional power supply bypass capacitor just to make this a little bit more stable. Now let's have a look at some waveforms. Okay, so now I've finally got the fine. Okay, so now I've finally got the camera in a good position in front of the scope. Overcompensated for how my voice goes. I'm always cracking all the time. Yeah, if anybody knows a good way of filming a scope, please let me know because this is about the best I can do right now. I'm gonna power up the circuit. Let's see if I can get that clip to stay on there. There we go. So. This is about 50% duty cycle, and the frequency is about 30 kilohertz. Pretty much right within where I want it. And as I change the duty cycle, you can see that the frequency does not really drift that much. On the lowest setting, we're about 31 kilohertz. Let's go to the highest pulse width before it really starts to drift. And we're about 28 kilohertz, so yeah. That seems pretty good. I'm sorry about the glare on the screen. The weather forecast said it would be cloudy today. So what do we get? Sun. And every time it's sunny, I have to readjust the camera's white balance for sunlight. Then when it's dark, I have to readjust the camera's white balance for indoor lighting. Why can't it just stay cloudy all the time? Weather? What's going on, weather forecast? You said it would be cloudy today. So, oh, hang on, let me just put my headphones on so I know if it's working. Test, test, one, two, three. Test, test, one, two, three. Tonight only. The fabulous Blues Brothers Palace Hotel Ballroom. Tonight only. Yep, I think we're working. All right, well, here we have the basic buck converter circuit. I'm not sure how well this coil is going to work. It's just one I pulled out of one of my random junk boxes. This is a gate drive transformer where I've just wired all the windings in series. Measured it, it's about 20 millihenry. I didn't specifically wind it particularly for that, that's just what it happens to be. So I've got a triple five pulse width generator, the buck converter part itself, and for the load I'm using a light bulb. So let's see how well this works. I'm going to turn on the power supply for this part of the circuit. Hopefully nothing blows up. Okay, voltage is staying at zero, right where it should be. I'm going to connect up the triple five. And let's see what we get. Right, so, we're about 0 0.6 volts. I'm going to start winding this up. And let's see if we can change the voltage. Yep, getting a little bit of light out the bulb now. It's got to like 5 volts. Alright. It's got to 9. Yep, this seems to be working really good. Can we get 12? Yep. So, that seems to be working. Test the MOSFET, make sure that's not getting hot. Nope. Well then, I think the next thing to do is do some measurements on the scope. Okay, so as promised, some scope readouts. So, the yellow line is the gazenta on this side of the coil. The blue line is the gazalta on this side of the coil. Now I'm going to start increasing the voltage, I mean the pulse width, and as you can see, as I increase the pulse width, the output voltage goes up. Let's just um, zoom in a little bit on that. Wrong way, you do have a little bit of ring in there, wrong waveform. Come on, scope. Work with me here. 
So, increasing the pulse width, and you can see the output voltage goes up. Decreasing the pulse width, and the voltage goes down. Just like I said it would. So I want to try with a different coil, so I'm going to take this one out. And bear with me a second. Right, so I've now connected all the windings in parallel. I don't know what the um, inductance is, but um, we'll turn it up. Let's see what we get. And yeah, we're getting a lot more artifacts now, so... Whatever this is, it's not quite enough. Also, maybe my diode isn't fast enough. It is a fast recovery diode, I just don't know exactly how fast. Now I'm going to try it with this coil. This also has all of its windings in parallel. Let's see what this one gets. I'll also have to measure the inductance of this one, see what this one gives us. Just get that in the hole. The hole what? I don't know. Right, there we go. That's in. Let's try with this one. Yeah, that's given us some nice waveform. So I think this might be the coil that I'm going to go with. Got quite a bit of ringing there, but that's not really... That's not really worrying me. Well, I've tried it with a shocky diode. And check this out. There's almost no ringing there at all. Even when I turn it up. So yeah, I think that was the problem. Now I'm going to try connecting a capacitor across the supply. Hopefully it doesn't blow up. I tried it with... Uh, this one here is rated 1000 microfarads, 16 volts, which is well within what we're working with here. And that capacitor got hot. Shows you how reliable these cheap Chinese components can be. Stick that in. Hopefully it won't blow up or get hot. And yeah, I think that's increased our waveform even more. And yeah, I think our waveform's even better now. Let's just zoom in on that. I'm going to adjust the pulse width. Beautiful. That is perfect. Can you really see how this coil is and other capacitor already smoothing that out? Okay. So we're about ready to try this on the laptop's power supply. Right now, like before in this video, I just have this connected to my bench supply. So I've put a heatsink on the MOSFET. And I've got a fuse on the power incoming to the MOSFET. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect up my laptop's power supply, which I've already spliced the wire on, and I'm going to run this into my lights. All right then, so we're all set up and ready to go. I'm a little bit concerned because I measured how much current the light panel takes, and that takes about 3 amps, or well, pretty much dead on 3 amps, something like 3.003, so yeah, we can just say 3 amps. So I'm not sure if this is going to be a big enough heatsink on the MOSFET. I'm also not sure how well this laptop power brick is going to handle that. It does say 3 amps on it. The other thing is that I only have a 2 amp fuse here, so uh, yeah. And immediately as soon as something goes wrong, if something does go wrong, yank out this wire which will cut all power from the laptop power brick. Which I'm now going to plug in. Wish me luck. I hate it when they spark when you plug it in. That's in. Now just before I do anything, I'm just going to measure that we have got voltage coming out of that because that was a bit of a concerning spark. But no, nope, we've got our 19 volts coming out there. So, 
so far so good. Right, now we're going to plug the 555 in. And let's see what we get. Okay, we've got 3 volts coming out of the circuit. I'm going to start wicking this up. Yeah, the lights are coming on. Okay, so we're at 9 volts. I'm not going to go up to 12 volts just yet. I'm just going to periodically check the MOSFET. Okay, let's go up to 10 volts. Making sure that the MOSFET is staying cool. Okay, I'm just going to let that run for a few minutes and uh, turn it up a little more and yeah, we'll see how well it works. And I've only got about 37 minutes on my battery, so yeah, I might as well swap those over I don't, while I'm at it. Okay, so I've okay, so I've turned the voltage up to 13 volts. It doesn't seem as bright as it was when I was powering off my homemade supply, but I think the reason for that is because of the clip leads I'm using to connect it up. There's probably some resistance along them. Yeah, I can feel a little bit of warmth on those wires, so... Speaking of warm, let's check the MOSFET. It's warm. Just very barely warm, but... Well, it's been on for about 10 minutes now, so I just want to check the temperatures. This is just barely warm. And that doesn't seem to have shifted at all. That's barely warm as well. And that's why I wanted to go with switch mode, because if I went with a linear kind of circuit, this would be baking right now, so... Sadly though, um, I don't think I will go with this, because I've had another idea. I've unearthed my Wii U power supply, and I've taken it apart, and I found a couple of trimmers in there. I'm not going to be able to focus on that, because uh, there's a trimmer there, and there's a Another trimmer there. Tried adjusting those, they don't really do anything. Yes, I did make sure to discharge the main capacitor in there before I picked it up. I'm not that stupid. The thing is, that's a 15 volt 7 amp supply, which I think would be much more appropriate for the lights. I could get rid of all of this um, buck regulator stuff and just run the lights off post 15 volts. And I think that would be a lot better of a solution than this. But that's going to be in another video. Because this is probably like 500,000 hours long already, so yeah. Until next time, goodbye. And of course, in my stupidity and haste to get this video out, I forgot to show a schematic of the, um, I forgot to show the final schematic. So yeah, here it is. For you to ponder over. I might make a few changes to this. Uh, might use a bigger MOSFET than what I've used there. That is, if I go with this. Yeah, but yeah, like I said, this video is getting too long. So, until next good, but um, time goodbye for real this time.